Hi there, I'm back, and this is Japan number four, modern Japan, and this corresponds to uh, 19.1 in your textbook, which uh, which includes page 411 to 414 of your text, as well as 19.2 um, and 19.3, so pages 415 to 421. All right, well, Japan staged one of the world's biggest economic comebacks following World War II. It became known as the economic miracle. Today's lecture is all about modern Japan and this improbable economic rebound. All right, well, following World War II, Japan was completely devastated and debilitated, both economically and physically. In 1945, following Japan's surrender, the world wanted to ensure that Japan would never again use war as a tool for nationalism or for its own goals. Major goals for Japan included the creation of a democratic government and society. In order to help Japan recover from the war and implement these peaceful goals, the U.S. occupied Japan from 1945 to 1952. Under the occupation, led by General Douglas MacArthur, the Japanese demilitarized and their armed forces were completely disbanded. Their overseas empire was also disbanded, and certain military leaders were put on trial by the U.N. for war crimes. Those found guilty were either imprisoned or executed for their crimes against humanity. See, the end of World War II marked the first time in world history where leaders could be held accountable for their actions during war. The UN has the power to enforce crimes against humanity if they choose. Many European and Japanese war criminals were put on trial following World War II. In Japan, General MacArthur helped the Japanese adopt a new constitution in 1947. The emperor's power was once again taken away and he became a figurehead again. Power was again returned to the Japanese legislator called the Diet, and we learned about that earlier in one of my um, prior lectures. The new constitution granted rights to citizens, including freedom of speech, freedom of the press, gave women the right to vote, it granted equal educational opportunities, and made all people equal before the law. The new constitution also made militarism illegal, and initially made Japan's military forces illegal as well. They have a military force now. We'll talk more about that later. Land was redistributed and large zaibatsus, those huge family-run businesses, were broken up initially into smaller companies. The occupation ended in 1952. During the Korean War, which we have already learned about, and we've, we've learned how it was a proxy war during the Cold War period, um, during this war, the Japanese assisted the U.S., and they were our biggest ally in the region. Japan has remained a close ally, uh, ally pardon me, of the U.S. since World War II. However, the Japanese still are facing many challenges, or rather they faced many challenges after the occupation. After the Americans left, they further modified their constitution, and they reestablished the zaibatsus, those family-run businesses, to help create or stimulate economic growth. Various political parties were established, including the LDP, also called the Liberal Democratic Party, and it dominated politics for almost 40 years until a series of scandals forced them to give up power, probably around the 1990s or so. Because Japan operates using a parliamentary system, political parties must share power with one another if they do not have a majority of the votes in parliament or the diet. If a political party in a parliamentary system of government fails to gain a majority vote in parliament on a specific measure, then a new election is held, and a coalition government often forms. This means that several political parties share power in government. This ensures that no one political party can dominate politics in a nation, and it forces groups with differing opinions to work together and actually compromise. All right, well, now we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, some of the changing social patterns in Japan. See, since World War II, there have been many changes in Japanese society. There is more equality in families between husbands and wives in terms of legal issues and inheritance laws. Uh, arranged marriages are pretty rare these days. And like highly or many highly industrialized societies, the nuclear family has replaced the extended family structure throughout Japan, mostly because urbanization has resulted in crowded apartment living and expensive city life, and this has resulted in smaller families throughout Japan. And although women have equal rights in Japan, they still struggle with workplace equality. It is typically much harder for females to advance in the workplace or hold the highest paid jobs in Japan. 
University admissions are improving for women, but overall there are fewer women in higher education than men. Many women in Japan have secretarial jobs and are sometimes called office ladies, traditionally. Office ladies often include married women with children who work outside of the home to help support their family with a second income by necessity. These women face the challenge of a full-time job outside of the home in addition to the additional task of raising their kids when they get home. In Japan, many of the domestic tasks, like child rearing, are still done by women. Weekend tasks like house cleaning, shopping, and preparing meals are still done mostly by women, even if they have a job outside of the home. Other social changes in Japan include the adoption of Western culture. Speaking from personal experience, American culture is extremely popular in Japan. In each of my visits to Japan, school groups have approached me to ask for my picture, uh, not because I'm super famous or anything, but... Well, it's because of how tall I am and because of my hair color. It's sort of been this, this surreal experience each time. It's kind of funny. Anyway, Japan is a huge importer of American cultural goods. Finally, another social change in Japan includes education. 94% of students complete high school in Japan. Oops, and there's the bell in the background, sorry. Anyway, 94% of students complete high school in Japan, with a little more than 40% going on to higher education. By comparison, only about 80% of American students finish high school, with only about 20% going on to college. This is significant. Why? Well, Japan's numbers reflect a very high educational level amongst their general population, similar to that in South Korea. This equates to a very well-educated workforce. Some people believe this helped both South Korea and Japan to rebound so quickly from World War II. In Japan, competition for university is intense. Many students attend Juku cram schools after their regular school hours to help them get accepted at top universities. Uh, you could compare this maybe to SAT prep or other types of tutoring outside of school. The Harvard of Japan is Todai, or Tokyo University, and a degree from Todai opens many doors in the business world in Japan. So, you know, lots of students are competing for those university places at the top schools. Japan's emphasis on education allowed it to overcome many challenges following World War II. The speed with which Japan was able to recover and then successfully compete in the world marketplace is often referred to as the economic miracle. Super important. Write that down. There were other events that helped to contribute to the economic miracle early on, in addition to its educated workforce. The Korean War conflict resulted in a need for goods and supplies by the American forces who purchased these from Japan. This economic stimulus helped Japan start the recovery process and rebuild. They sold over $4 billion worth of supplies to the U.S. during the Korean War. Profits from the war enabled the Japanese to completely rebuild factories throughout their nation and outproduce their aging American counterparts. Japan was able to recapture many of the markets it had lost. Japan's economy is currently ranked third in the world as of 2014 and was second for a time leading up to the 1990s when a huge recession then hit. Japan has focused on using its skilled workforce to create complex machines, electronics, as well as automobiles. Following World War II, Japan focused on recreating its once dominant textile industry, often moving its factories to smaller nations to benefit from lower wages. They also began massive efforts at shipbuilding as well as steel production. Much of Japan's economy is based on high-tech industries, especially DVD, CD, and Blu-ray technologies. It was during the 1970s and the 1980s that Japan bought the intellectual property rights to VCR technology. I don't know if you all know what VCRs are, but um, yeah, your parents used to have them, and maybe you still do around the house, so go look. Anyway, this um, access or access to this technology allowed them to develop a growing industry without outside interference, and this will lead to the creation of other electronics technologies. Well, during the 1970s, many countries faced an oil crisis. Much of the world's oil is produced and controlled by OPEC. OPEC stands for the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and is made up of many Middle Eastern nations, several African nations, and two South American nations. OPEC helps to regulate and determine the price of oil because they control most of the world's oil supply. OPEC quadrupled the price of oil in the world in the mid-1970s, creating a worldwide crisis. Because Japan has always been dependent on foreign oil, its economy took a major hit. As a result, the Japanese have always been dependent 
or because of this dependence, um, they need to, needed to learn to conserve energy and develop technologies that relied less on petroleum. For instance, they use nuclear energy for most of their power needs in Japan. There are serious environmental concerns relating to nuclear energy when things go wrong, however. In fact, um, in March or the March 2011 tsunami, which heavily damaged the Fukushima nuclear plant, led to a massive environmental disaster that Japan will be recovering from in years to come. Whole towns surrounding this power plant have been evacuated and are now ghost towns. The dependence on nuclear power in Japan certainly has its costs. However, less dependence on foreign oil has helped Japan develop new automobile technologies like hybrid cars. Japan is one of the largest producers of automobiles in the world today. Japan has enjoyed a favorable balance of trade, and that's important, favorable balance of trade with other nations, typically exporting more goods than it imports. This often creates a trade imbalance with other nations, meaning other countries import more things from Japan than they import, frustrating Japan's trading partners. Despite this, Japan has a much better relationship with its Asian nations, pardon me, let me rephrase that, with its Asian neighbors, rather, than it has had in the past, with the exception of North Korea, with whom it has had much tension over the past 50 years. Following World War II, many nations received reparations from Japan in the form of Japanese goods or products. Reparations are payments made to another country to make up for damages caused by warfare. Many recipients of these reparations were upset with Japan for not paying cash, but rather for paying with products. They felt that this increased other countries' dependence on Japanese goods. They sort of had a point. Anyway, Japan has made efforts in recent years to apologize for its actions before, during, and after World War II. One way that they've done this is to provide low-interest loans to smaller Asian nations. One of Japan's greatest assets includes an amazing work ethic amongst its population. There is a great deal of loyalty and respect in the Japanese workplace, with many people staying with the same company for many years of their careers. Japan's focus on education, its work ethic, concentration on electronics industries, and a strong banking industry have all helped Japan make an amazing recovery from the World War II period. However, Japan still faces challenges. Pollution, environmental concerns like the Fukushima nuclear plant, as well as issues relating to urbanization, all affect Japanese life. A huge issue facing Japan is its aging population. There are, many, there are more elderly people in society than young people, and a concern, there's a major concern as to who will take care of this aging population. Another concern is, with one of the oldest, on average, retired populations in the world, how does a nation provide health care and benefits to this segment of society without bankrupting itself? There simply aren't enough young workers paying into the government systems to support the current aging population and the costs of their needs. These are problems that many developing nations and developed nations face today. Finally, Japan has really reestablished itself in the world today. They remain one of the U.S.'s biggest allies. However, although they have a military again, Japan has fully embraced a concept called pacifism. Pacifism means the opposition to the use of force under any circumstances. During the Cold War, Japan avoided building up its military. During the Gulf War in 1990, called the Persian Gulf War, Japan opposed sending troops to help Americans and were criticized by the U.S., However, the September 11th attacks in 2001 led to the Japanese Diet passing a law to create a military force to assist nations like the U.S. in non-combative roles, such as rescue operations at sea. All right, other problems facing Japan. Um, they also face a lot of urbanization issues, and we're going to be talking more about these in class. All right, thanks for listening. Bye.